Okay, today I'm going to show you the replacement of a LCD assembly on a Gateway T1612 series. Um, doing this because I kind of want to show you that it's possible to get these fixed even if they get uh, dropped and whatnot. If I kind of tilt a little bit here, uh, you should hopefully be able to see a little bit of distortion in the screen here. If I kind of tilt it there, we go. You can see it. So you got that little bit of discoloration there, a darker spot compared to that. Uh, you got some here that's actually broken crystals in the screen. And if you go along the side here, uh, you'll notice that the plastic is busted here. Um, the actual screw is kind of popped out of this one a little bit. See, the chipped off corner, broken down the seam there. All that good stuff. When you have a laptop that is broken like this, where it's not just the screen but the plastic on the outside, it's best just to replace the entire assembly. Cheaper too. Um, if you get just the screen itself, you can usually pay about a hundred bucks, um, hundred and fifty, something like that. Some of them as expensive as two hundred. Um, they used to be about four hundred a couple years ago. Um, and then if you go through and you buy just the plastics, and if you need a screw set, you know, that can be easily another 40 bucks, uh, you know, 60 bucks, depending on how much each manufacturer wants to charge you just for the plastics. So, uh, keep that in mind. But what we're going to do today is just completely take off the whole LCD screen, and we're going to go ahead and replace it with a brand new one, right from the manufacturer. So... Uh, first thing we're going to do is, as usual with working on any laptop, is we're going to take the battery out and then we're going to go ahead and start taking out the screws for the screen itself. Okay, with the battery out, we're going to go ahead and remove a couple screws here that are most likely holding in the top cover on the laptop. Uh, so we have a couple here. Uh, possibly this one here, yeah, these two there, and oh, there it is. There's usually one or two in the battery case as well nowadays. One there, and possibly uh, that one there. So we'll take those out. And what we're also going to do is go ahead and take off these um, covers and look under them to make sure that there's nothing under those um, since there is a PCI slot in here wireless card chances are we're going to be able to access it through one of these panels anyway so we can disconnect the wires and pull it out for the screen so we'll have to take those off anyway but uh, we're going to start with the panels first and then we're going to do the extra screws that I pointed out there are some other ones on here but we shouldn't have to do them since we're just doing the screen assembly itself all right, just like I said, taking off the panels gave us access to the wires for the wireless card. Uh, they usually do run underneath the laptops and into the card and then back up into the screen. Seems like a long way to go for something so trivial, but that's what happens. So as you can see, they kind of feed in through here, down this channel, and under here and into that. So. What I'll go ahead and do is just undo these two and go ahead and uh, pop them up out of the cable routing holes that they have. That way when um, it goes time to do the uh, pulling off the screen, we can just easily put on its side and just pull these on out. Not sure if I mentioned it before in the last little bit, but... Um, there's also going to be usually a keyboard screw uh, that holds it in. This one's conveniently marked with a K, but uh, every once in a while you do have screws that are under the panels as well for the keyboard, and that was one of the reasons as well for removing these individual cover pieces. So, and as usual, I do my standard screw layout of setting them up in the same order that they came out of the system. So, I'm going to unwrap these. You can easily pull these up. Uh, usually with a pair of forceps you can go through, get a 
click onto them and kind of just wiggle them up and pop them straight up. If you try and pry them up with a screwdriver, you can break them. Uh, that's why I like grabbing hold of them with the forceps and going straight up with them. Usually it keeps them intact pretty well. And then it's just a matter of undoing the tape here and just popping them up with a uh, what's usually known as a black stick or a uh, pry tool, very small wooden sticks can be used for this as well. You can find those in like hobby shops. Just getting in there, pulling them up, or just to push them down when you go to reinstall them. All right, as you can see, we got that done. Um, just went ahead, pulled them up, had pop it up out of the channel, hold back that little piece of tape. Now we just kind of got them sitting here, nice and free. Uh, going to go ahead and flip it over and take care of the rest of this here. Um, before we do it, I want to point out that uh, there are two more screws you'll have to do on the rear end of the system. You probably can't see that one because of lighting, but um, there's one there and there's one in the corner there. I'll show those when it comes time to do them, but uh, those there we want to keep in place until we get this next part done, which is going through and popping up the actual uh, keyboard bezel. From here we should be able to access the rest of the cables, video input, all that for the screen. And the best way of doing this is to open up the screen in a system that's of this style, open up all the way, and we're going to try to go through and pry up in the little corners here like this. Looking and then not putting the camera there doesn't help, does it? Um, trying to go through there, pry up with our pry tool here to get under there, lift it up. It's a two hand job, so I can't really record it at the same time. As you go across here, just prying up slowly, giving a little bit of a twist as you go across all the way, and then trying to work back with it. Uh, some laptops you might have to go through and actually. Uh, start with the middle piece here. This camera is having a fit. Uh, start with the middle piece here, pry that up, and then uh, work from there, or going from the end of the hinges, work in the middle, trying to pull that up. So, Alrighty, let me give you a little trick on these here. When you go through and you're starting to pull them up, and sometimes you get to this point and it just doesn't want to kind of come up, you just kind of start we're going a little bit side to side like this and they usually will just undo the snaps naturally by that means and then you can just kind of tilt them up and then you can have at them when you are going and sticking your tool uh, under these to go through and pry up uh, do be careful sometimes you have these circuit boards like this here sometimes you have these uh, little ribbon cables whatnot under here and if you just really, really just kind of rip into it, you can sometimes shred these cables. And then you're going to find yourself not just replacing a screen, but replacing a very hard to find, expensive cable. And um, that's no fun. So um, after you go through and you kind of pry one of these guys up, usually you can do the same thing with the keyboard. Every once in a while they might have a screw in it. Um, I don't know why the lighting is so bad. This is normal lighting I always have. It's usually great. Uh, I think it's just the camera. Uh, but you can see that one screw hole there. Uh, there's nothing in it. And there's nothing in that one there. It's just kind of like a little placeholder. So you should be able to just go ahead, take your keyboard, lift it up. And that way you can disconnect uh, the single cable that's going to be going under here. Uh, without having to go through and try finagling this thing back in here, which is probably going to be a much harder deal. So we're going to do that. But as you can see here as well, the uh, one piece, one of the screws that we had through the bottom, that was just for this little uh, cover piece here that just popped right on off by itself uh, nice and easily. So we just got to remember to put that in and make sure that these wires are free that screw hole, otherwise they'll get shredded too. As you can see, here's our graphics connector uh, for the screen. And then we have a couple cables going down for the uh, uh, wireless. 
and uh, the USB camera as well that's on here and the microphones so let's go ahead and get this keyboard up uh, should just be a matter of kind of holding this guy in place here and then just lifting right on up on here it's a little hard to do with just one hand but we just kind of lift it away like so and as you can see there's that one connector we tilt our keyboard back up and now we're good to go uh, so all we need to do is go ahead and disconnect this here and then we can start uh, getting the rest of this going here we also need to bring that keyboard up so we can get to the other connector here for the USB so uh, the USB camera so we're going to go ahead and disconnect this, disconnect that and um, we'll start fishing the wires up here for the uh, wireless and that should be it uh, as far as that step goes then we can take out these screws for the uh, monitor and then we'll have the ones on the back that I point out before so getting ahead of myself let's get these cables out of the way I want to point this out before I <laughs> pull the wiring up because you probably won't be able to see it then this is one of the most convoluted wiring routing schemes I've seen now follow me here folks uh, with this cable here goes all the way around this little silver bit down through this channel over here it would go under this tape and then down this hole now this little gray wire you see it goes into that hole as well but it goes all the way around here up and on this side so why didn't they just go ahead and just route it right through here along with it because both of those two wires those are the wireless I'm guessing maybe they're trying to do it for avoiding signal interference or something I don't know but you'd figure they'd just make better shielding for it but maybe the shielding is too expensive so they found that this was cheaper I, I don't know <clears throat> it amazes me sometimes but uh, go ahead and when you're pulling up on the uh, video connector be sure you pull straight up don't try and get at an angle because these things are very very thin these days those can break uh, given that we are replacing it still you don't want to actually damage the possible receiver there and uh, there's usually a grounding screw attached conveniently already removed that so now we can just do the fun part of pulling up the wiring here and trying to do the oh so careful job so we don't screw up these um, guide pins or possibly the wires if for some reason we have to put the screen back in so we'll continue okay after getting that crazy wiring mess done uh, we're going to go ahead and remove the two screws on the back here that you can conveniently see and then we're going to remove the four screws underneath here and those two there and our screen assembly should just lift clean off and then we can do the reverse to install the new one okay we have our old screen off um, like I said it came off that specific way but uh, one thing I should probably note out to you is you want to go through and probably uh, take these little things off first uh, that's right they actually have uh, two more of these stupid things uh, these little hinge covers uh, on of course the left and the right I uh, didn't notice those so that was part of the screen but uh, yeah go through and take those off first because otherwise you could accidentally break the tabs on those or um, you know possibly crack some of the plastic on the back or something like that I was able to go through and just take it off straight up without having much of an issue on that so but um, for someone who might be doing it the first time double check those <laughs> uh, so now we can go ahead and put our new screen on and uh, it's 
pretty much the exact opposite of what we did. I'm going to go ahead and save these things for the very last thing to put back onto the screen um, because they're just such a pain in the rear. And uh, let's go ahead and start with this. All right, as you see, I've gone through and reattached the screen back to the system here. And uh, a little bit of a tip for you is when you go through and you screw these in initially, you know, screw them down, then tilt the screen towards you, then away from you, you know, do that two or three times and tilt it back, and then try tightening these things down again in the back and the ones on the front here, because what will happen sometimes you have the hinges slightly off kilt or something like that and the process of doing that kind of makes them settle in a little bit you can just push it down a little bit tighten them up and that way you got yourself a nice solid screen fitting a lot of people don't know about that little trick um, but yeah from here now we're going to go through and route our cables back to where they were um, ever so <laughs> carefully and uh, because I know I'm not going to be able to get it on camera. Don't forget to go through and put the uh, grounding screw back in for your video. Uh, make sure it goes through the uh, loop and then right into the casing there. And then any of the tape that you had on before, go ahead and try to reapply that how it was. And uh, yeah, from there we'll go ahead and get the rest of this on here okay I did a whole bunch of stuff here um, went ahead and routed all those cables like I said uh, went through I uh, got the screw in for that I uh, got the uh, wires cables down through and got those tied in this is not going to stay on um, so got all that nice tape down all that good stuff and uh, now we can go through and um, begin putting the keyboard back on. As you notice, I had taken that off. Make things a little bit easier because this thing has to be flipped left and right uh, to try and get these uh, cables go through there. Uh, the cable for the camera is attached. And it just looked a little bit like it wasn't in all the way, but just double checked it. Uh, that's taped down, so... Uh, with the keyboard, um, just like any other one, you go on through, uh, you flip it forward towards you, and you just have the ribbon cable. You go ahead and you wrap that around, and uh, you slide into the connector here, and you push it closed. And the same thing is going to work with those volume buttons, uh, all that good stuff that we had on uh, this little guy here so I just gotta go through, do the same thing with that thread that into the connector push that closed and then we can turn this thing on and see what we get alrighty as you see it's powering up booting up all that good stuff so what I went ahead and did is put the uh, covers back on, made those connections just like I said, test them out, make sure they're good uh, looks like this person didn't shut the computer down properly when the screen busted, so it's going to be doing its thing. But uh, I went ahead, put the screw in for that there. Um, power button works, all that good stuff. Put the back panel covers on. I'm pretty sure you're all smart enough to figure that out if you've uh, been able to do any of this stuff so far. Uh, that does need to come back on once you're done. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Um, once the system comes up, um, there's a couple things you want to do to make sure everything works. Go through and try all the keys on your keyboard. Uh, if you have one of these volume control panels that are on here, like that cable we disconnected, make sure that works. And that's it. Um, make sure your resolution is correct, all that stuff. But uh, that's all it takes is you just go on through pull out the uh, old screen, put in the new screen, route a couple cables. Um, the only real hang up on this thing was two things, these stupid little shoulders, um, hinge covers as they call them, and the horrible, horrible routing for that uh, <laughs> wireless cable just goes all the way around. 
Uh, speaking of the wireless, make sure that works too when it comes back up. Test it out, see if you can see some networks, make sure you're getting good signal on them and all that. So that's it for this episode. I uh, hope you enjoyed that, found that somewhat useful, got a few tips out of it, all that good stuff. So till next time, I'll see you later.